In this tutorial, you learn to use the Mass FX toolset to animate castle walls crumbling under the attack of war machines. The scene shows a medieval castle and a couple of catapults in the field. The catapults are already animated to throw rocks towards the front wall. The flags on the castle roof were animated and the animation baked onto a point cache modifier. If the flags are not animated when you open the scene file, reload the cache data from the files you downloaded for this tutorial. Use flag001.xml for the top flag and flag002.xml for the banner. Arguably, the drawbridge and portcullis ought to be closed in time of attack. Although this has nothing to do with the dynamic simulation, we might as well do things properly. Select the drawbridge and go to the Modify panel. Custom attributes are already created to control the gates. Animate the closing of the two gates over time, the portcullis between frames 10 and 80, and the drawbridge between frames 40 and 200. Feel free to experiment with other values to get a timing you like. However, the purpose of this exercise is to breach the castle walls once the stones hit them using the Mass Effect toolset. The first thing you need to do is identify the objects that will be part of the simulation. Obviously, the hurled stones and the wall itself need to be part of the simulation, but also other objects such as the inner courtyard and the outer terrain. These are objects that the projectiles and wall fragments will ultimately collide with. Even the stairway is close to the impact point and ultimately will receive some debris from the wall explosion. And so, the first order of business is to identify and isolate these objects you need to work on. Go back to frame 0, zoom in and select one of the animated stones. Using Ctrl to add to the selection, select the second stone, the wall, the stairway, the inner yard, and the terrain. Invert the selection and name the selection Non-SIM Objects. Hide the selection. Now you are left with the objects you need to work with. The next thing to consider is the nature of the rigid body elements in the simulation. There are essentially three types of rigid bodies that you can use in a Mass Effect simulation. These are static bodies, kinematic bodies and dynamic bodies. Static bodies are elements that will not move at all in the scene, although other objects in the simulation can collide with them. Examples of static bodies in this scene include the courtyard and the outer terrain. Because of the trajectory of the projectiles, you can also consider the stairway to be used as a static body as objects will ultimately collide with it. These objects are easy to assign to the simulation and hardly require any special setup or editing. A kinematic body is typically an object that you have already animated in the scene, but that you wish to make part of the simulation after it has reached a certain frame. In this case, the animated stones are good examples of kinematic bodies. They are keyframed to travel towards the wall, but after frame 64 for one stone and frame 98 for the other, you'd want the simulation to take over. Finally, dynamic objects are all about how objects really behave in the real world. They bump into other objects, they are pushed around, and they are affected by gravity. In this particular scene, though, you do not have any objects to define as dynamic objects yet. The wall you need to breach is a single entity at this time. You need to fragment it into chunks and pieces right around where the stones hit the battlements. Only then 
Can you select those fragments and assign them as dynamic objects to use in the simulation? And this is really the hardest part that awaits you. How do you go about breaking the wall into chunks and pieces? Consider this wall. It should really be made of big blocks of stone. You could subdivide it into blocks of stone in many different ways. One way would be to subdivide it as an editable poly by connecting edges, ultimately detaching faces and capping them. This procedure would take too long. Another method would be to use the Procutter compound object. This method lets you use an object to cut through another. Another method is to simply replace the wall, or part of it, with boxes representing stone blocks. This means slicing through the old wall, building one block of stone, and then using the array tool to duplicate it. All three methods can be considered, and yet, the fastest method is different and relies on a free third-party script. You'll learn to use the script in the next movie, but first, you'll prepare the wall accordingly. Select the wall, and at the editable poly level, add a slice modifier. In slice plane subobject mode, Move the slicing plane up slightly above the courtyard level. Exit subobject mode when done. Enable snap mode and set it to endpoint only. Create two boxes that represent the two sections of the wall, the ramparts and the watch path. These boxes are needed by the script you will use later to turn them into stone blocks. Select the original wall again and at the slice modifier level choose the remove top option. You can now see the two boxes better. With the wall replaced by two boxes you are now ready to use a free script that will replace the boxes with stone blocks. This is what you will do next in part 2 of this series.